Hey everybody, I'm back. So now you're ready to start your experiments about colliding objects. So hopefully you've already done the full, um, watched all of the notes and listened to all those examples. Examples on there are a pretty good idea to follow. You don't have to do those. You could do something involving a skateboard or eggs, whatever you'd like to do. But in this case, your, me your experiment has to measure one variable that affects um, objects colliding. So yes, something has to run into something else. So it could just be an egg falling through the air and hitting the ground with a parachute on it. Um, but the idea is that things have to come in contact so we can think about the forces acting. And yes, make sure you only have one variable. So this is where you'd actually be recording your information. So as we usually start out, there's some kind of question about forces that your experiment will be um, gathering evidence uh, to answer. So keep in mind, you want to figure out what your variable is. Here I have an example. How does a larger parachute affect the impact of an egg hitting the ground? So you can erase this example here and, of course, type in what you'd like to type in. Just realize a question is written as a complete sentence with a capital and should end with a question mark. So whatever you have here, this really should be maybe just one sentence, two at the most, but really one well-written sentence. Be aware that we're looking at cause and effect. Okay, so we're thinking about the forces acting on something or the forces causing a particular effect. And yes, your experiment that you design, you're going to have to gather evidence such as data. Okay, so this is where you'd write your question. Next, experimental design. You're going to be typing this in here on that big blank area. There's a text box. Um, and here's my long description. But basically, you want to tell me what you've done to set up your experiment. Uh, you could take uh, several photos that are really obvious what's happening, or you could write it out as a description. Realize in high school, this is something you're going to need to do very regularly, and you should be able to do it well. So this is really good practice. Realize that your design needs to be able to answer that question. So these kind of all are interconnected. So you kind of want to think through your ideas. Um, once again, the word variable shows up in blue here a bunch because it's that one variable that you're testing. Uh, make sure that your experiment has just only one thing changed between trials. So here is where you'd insert a photo of your experiment that's really clear about what's happening, or you can describe it. So maybe your description is three to five sentences, as long as it's really clear what's happening. This is where you type that. Next, we always make a claim, right? Your claim is, is kind of like your hypothesis. Um, in this case, our claim really is based on our data. Like, what does our data show us? And I color-coded this here to help us think more about it. Um, this example can be erased, and this is where you'd be writing in your claim. Claims are usually one sentence, and they're kind of like your thesis statement uh, when you think about a paragraph. So a larger parachute causes the egg to fall more slowly with the effect that uh, it will be less damaged when it hits the ground. Okay, so if you're going to measure how damaged the egg gets, then you're going to have to quantify that. You're going to have to come up with a number so you could say what percentage of the egg is cracked. Um, that would probably be pretty helpful. Probably measuring the time it is in the air is probably going to be the most useful and the easier to explain what's going on. So your claim is usually one solid sentence, starts with a capital, ends with a period. Um, and of course, this is your answer to your question. Next, this is where we're going to record our evidence. So we're going to record observations, which could be, you know, description of how much of that egg is cracked or not cracked. But then we want to quantify things. We need to come up with data or numbers um, to describe what's happening. So I gave some examples over in yellow. You can measure the percent of area impacted or distance traveled or time in the air. Um, all of those you can measure fairly easily. If you're talking about distance traveled, you could use a ruler or measuring tape. Time in the air, you could just use a timer on your phone or a timer you might have at home. And in the spots where it says trial one and trial two, that's where you're going to type in your measurements. Now, these are sorts of things that don't have to be in complete sentences. You could make bullets and just describe your observations um, using key ideas. And give me some numbers. I want to see some numbers here. And make sure that there's only one variable that's different between your trials. So trial one might be big parachute, and trial two might be no parachute. Uh, so you just want to make sure there's only one difference between each of those two trials. And remember, in high school, this is how you're going to need to set up and analyze experiments a lot. So this is really good practice. 
So the last part is your reasoning. This is like your conclusion statement. You have to get really deep and think like Yoda and think about forces happening. Uh, so you want to be able to explain uh, what's really going on with your evidence. So connect all that data you collected, your evidence, and connect it back to your claim. That's kind of the big idea. This needs to be three sentences minimum. Really, in high school, you would be expected to write a five-sentence um, kind of conclusion paragraph of sorts. So this is good practice. Realize that this is where your explanation of all the forces and everything needs to come out, um, really explaining what all your data means. Okay, so this is where you'd be typing all this in, and this is what you'd be turning in as your final project. Realize you have to actually run an experiment to be able to collect all that data. Okay, and so good luck with your experiments.